So we're about to have our fourth match of the day here on day one of the leaning BWF World Championships. Those are the matches so far, just one of our matches going the full distance. And my goodness me, wasn't that an upset with uh, Kento Momoto, the 19-year-old Japanese player, number 13 seed, going out the very first match. So we're turning our attention now to women's doubles and the Malaysian pair of Vivian Hu and Wong Ki Wei, fresh from a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. So they should be full of confidence. They're up against the young Czech pairing of Shashka Kriskova and Katarina Tomalova from the Czech Republic. There they pair in the purple shirts. And there the left-hander, Moon Ki Wei, 25 years of age, born in Salanga. 26 on the world rankings at the moment. And their win-loss record for the year, I should point out, does not include their results from the recent Commonwealth Games, because the Commonwealth Games is not a world ranking event. So there, Vivian Hu, 24 years of age, born in Kuala Lumpur. So to the Czech pairing. 100 on the world ranking. And their win-loss record for the year. Well, down as five and five. I had them playing six tournaments this year, including a semi-final of the Portuguese International quarter-final in Croatia, where Tomalova also reached the quarter-final of the women's singles. Niels Hong Mortensen. Of Denmark is our umpire and Girish Natu of India, the service judge. So one would feel with the Malaysian pair having been as high as 12 on the world ranking. Currently 26, but 12 is very good indeed. Three titles, they've won two of them at major games, not only those Commonwealth Games last month, but also the Southeast Asian Games last year in Myanmar, also known as Burma. Beat Gracia Poli and Maswari in the final of the Southeast Asian Games, and they're a very highly rated pair indeed, have been playing very well. In fact, I think they recently beat the current world champions, didn't they? In Taipei. Yep. So that gives an indication of the quality of the Malaysian players. They're top favourite to win. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and you know, when you're watching them, that you always think that Vivian, who is so relaxed and laid back and playing all these wonderful shots, but sometimes they need, need a little bit of urgency into what she's doing. But uh, when they played in Glasgow just uh, a few be uh, weeks ago, I think they played very solidly. Yeah. So just for identification purposes, once again, it is Woon Ki Wei, who's the left-hander. There she yeah, is. In the picture. And with the Ladies and gentlemen, pair from the Czech Republic, Republic. Um, Katarina Tomalova, who's got the blonde hair on with my the left, Katarina Tomalova, Saka Klitschkova, Czech Republic. Unki um, Wei to serve to Saka Klitschkova. Love all. Play. So the Malaysians get this women's doubles first round match underway. Oh, 
That's a good opening rally. Smash the channel attack in between the two players from the Czech Republic. Two, clap. Three, clap. 24 years of age, Shashka Kruskova. Yeah, and that's nicely done. You notice she's got really very heavy strapping on that left ankle. No problem with her movement there. Deserved from Four, Vivian Hu. Now, Morton, I know that Katarina Tomalova got a scholarship from Badminton Europe and has been training here in Denmark in Osunsa. Okay. Uh, then I know um, the coach and, and all that and uh, what, what they're doing. So uh, she's in the so I didn't know that. Oh, that's one well taken as well from Tomalova. Yeah, well, they're obviously enjoying the experience. Yeah, they're having a smile on their face. It's good, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Fascinated by how athletes react when they're suddenly thrown into the spotlight and on centre stage. I, I doubt if they've had uh, global television exposure as they're having right now, and and they've obviously decided they really want to enjoy it and they're embracing the situation. And that shows to me very good character. for the good fortune. Just 22 years of age, Tomalova. Yeah. Not the best of ideas right into that uh, forehand of Wonke Wei. She's covering it so uh, left-handed and uh, not the best of shots from Tomalova. She played a delightful cross-court block, and not she, defensively? That one there mm. from the forehand side, and then what a miss that was. 
you know, I, I can't help thinking, wondering, you know, the, the coaches in Malaysia when they, they put these two players together. Because uh, Wun Ki Wei is, is a, an attacking player. And Vivian Hu is, she wants to lift whatever comes. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you have this tendency, you, you see that Wun Ki Wei is attacking and attacking, and suddenly the uh, shot comes to Vivian, and then she's just lifting and saying, okay, never mind, I defend it. Mm. So it's like so contrasting styles the two players are playing, but still they're chosen to play together. Now it's well taken from Wunki Wei. And she and Vivian Hu have a five point advantage here in this opening game. Yeah, not much backswing of the racket, still generating power. Just picking up on that point, Morton. And I'm immediately thinking, well, I agree totally with you that I think they're contrasting styles of play. One wants to attack, one wants to defend. Would you consider putting Lai Peijing? into the, the mix here, perhaps with Woon Ki Wei? Yeah, I would consider. Yeah. I definitely would consider. The thing is that uh, it doesn't, you know, under normal circumstances, I would say that, you know, contrasting styles is, is not a problem because, you know, you have the facility in the, in the doubles combination. But here it's so vastly different. Mm. that, you know, one is attacking and the other one is giving it away. One is attacking, the other one is giving it away yeah. all the time. Yeah. So there's no consistency in what they're doing. Well, and yet, both you and I had the privilege of watching the final of the recent Commonwealth Games, and I thought all of a sudden, Vivian, who was much more positive. Thank you. And what a difference it made. Exactly. I was just going to say it because we, we've seen her and she can do it and she can play attacking, aggressive badminton and be counter-attacking and really proactive and all that. But she rarely shows it. But she did in Glasgow. Yeah. to try. I have to say I'm I'm struggling with the with the concept of a player who has the capability of playing intense badminton not doing that on on every opportunity. Not just intense, that's the wrong word actually. It's more of a positive game, you know, which obviously she has seen from for herself is much more beneficial. It works. It works. Yes. Why on Stand earth wouldn't she do that on every Bonky. single match? It's a mental state. It's a, a mental approach and something that's so difficult to change. But you're right, it's uh, something the coaches and, and obviously the player have to work on. Um, but, but uh, I, I also think, and, and both of us agrees, that it's, it's wonderful to see that women's doubles in the world is changing. Yeah. It, it, it pays off to be attacking now. Mm. And, and that's a good thing. The defense is getting better and better, but the attack is getting better and better as well. So now we see the, the good Chinese combination. They, they really work hard and they attack a lot. And uh, that's where women's doubles is going. And that's what they should do as well. Yeah. Kruskova. Yeah, the smash wasn't really placed very well, opening up the court too much. 
like what we saw here. Just opposite. Gosh, I have to say, looking at that serve again, yeah. that looked awfully flat, didn't it? It did. The racket must be pointing in a downward direction. It's a good play. Yeah. on the defence there. Kruskova. Nice. Nice way to bring game up point. game point opportunities. Mm, that'll do nicely. 21 11 for Vivian Hu and Wu Ki Wei. Just 12 minutes needed. And here we have the Malaysian coach, Rosman Rasak, in charge of the women's doubles in Malaysia. I'm sure he was very happy with that performance in Glasgow. It's a little bit of a surprise that could win it. And the interesting part is that the Czech combination here is having no coach. So one game to the duck, good. Vivian Hu and Wu Ki Wei. 21-11. Now you were pointing out, Morton, that Shashka Kreskova and Katarina Tormalova don't have a coach with them. I find that a little unusual, but there again, it's great to see that a federation would rather send players than coaches, so... It's always the same argument, uh, but I totally agree. Yeah. When the money is short, players come first. Mm. Yeah. that knows because I know that I know you wouldn't say this yourself but I know that you've been in charge of players and there wasn't enough money for hotel rooms and you spent I think it was more than a week sleeping on the floor more than so a week a year <laughs> <laughs> yep yep the players come first without the players we don't have a sport Two, one. I have to admit, Morton, I have seen the Malaysian pair uh, go off the boil sometimes in matches. Is that uh, a fair comment? 
That's a fair comment, but it will not happen here. No. It will not. I, they will do what's necessary. Mm. Yeah, they, they look so much uh, better when they're on the attack and they've got winning shots, especially from the left-hander, Wunki Wei. There, she was trying to play the shuttle into the right place, but making the error. Look, there's nobody covering that forehand net. No, that would have been a straight winner. Hit it, hit it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, why would you, when it's that yeah. close and the shuttle is sh so short and it's an easy kill to it's make? It's so what, easy. Why would you take just, the risk? No, don't, don't do it. That's why I say, you know, I didn't know whether it was going in or out. That's why I just said, hit it, hit it. Because don't take the chance, no. just play it. It's an absolute sitter. The shuttle's near the back of the court. Of course, it's worth the risk, but not when it's that close to the net and such an opportunity to play the winner. Public need to perhaps work on being a little more alert when they're defending. I like their style when they're attacking. But when they're defending, they look a little bit static to me. I'd like to see them crouch down a little bit more, keep those feet moving. It's been a while, yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, they are both natural attacking players, but they have to pay attention to their defence as well. Good interception. Once again, it's on the forehand side. And obviously, from a check perspective, uh, try to stay away from that forehand play to the backhand side. Oh. Good Ten, shot six. from Vivian, who... Tomalo is doing the right thing. She's covering the centre of the court as what she did, but uh, Vivian, who just, she's seen it and, and went for that cross-court mm. smash. Good well, alertness. Amazing. Seven of the last eight points. Everybody. 
Mm, it was ambitious. They make that eight of the last nine points to the Malaysian pair if they go to the mid-game interval with, once again, a five-point advantage. They had a five-point advantage in game number one, which they closed out, 21-11. Good to see the Malaysians talking to each other, reinforcing perhaps what coach has said. Osman Razak, the coach, his advice, reinforcing that, encouraging each other. Play. to an end. Yeah, that's a lovely drop. Good change of pace. just have more to hurt their opponents the Malaysian pair yeah that's the problem in defense isn't it just a little bit static it's interesting now we've been uh, watching four matches uh, and still I haven't really been able to detect a, a drift in this stadium. No, I thought the same thing. Can't really say there's uh, anything consistent or something, oh, you have to watch out for that. Seems like the, the players are very happy with the conditions and both sides are the same and all that. Thanks, and variation on the attacking play, different angle. Going down the forehand side. Mm. She's a different player when she decides she's going to take the shuttle early, hit it in a downward direction. Well, she can do it. She's definitely got the tools in the toolbox, as I usually mm. say. Yeah. She can do it. They were three five down at one stage this Malaysian pair and since then they've been all dominant they're the indication from Tomalova that she wants the shuttle change the Malaysians oblige when are players going to learn that a new shuttle is a fast shuttle <laughs> <laughs> we'll never learn you as a coach, you can say that a billion times and they will never know. That's over. 19. after she made the error indication of the frustration
should have left it. There was hesitation there from Wounded Kiwi on her initial defensive shot. That one there. Would it have gone long? I suspect it might have done. Oh, service fault is called. 20. Match point 10. Wait. Four match points to be achieved. That's over. 11. 20. Oh, that's no, going wide. It was. Oh, what a shot! Yeah, good surprise. That's the best of the match from Katarina Tomalova. This time, third time of asking. And the match to the Malaysian pair of Vivian Hu and Wu Ki Wei. 21-11, 21-12. The match lasting just 27 minutes. So that means that the Malaysian pair will now face the number 15 seeds, uh, Nina Damke Kruza and Marie Ropka. The home players, and of course, they'll have to contend with the home support here in Denmark. But Malaysia will be very happy that they've got through round number one. Beautiful drop shots to win the match. And once again, confirmation of the score 21 11, 21 12 in 27 minutes. Well, we'll be able to enjoy the highlights from that match in just a moment and when we come back you will be joined by Richard Kaufman and Jim Laugerson who will see you through the next four matches here at the World Badminton Championships. Hello and uh, a very good afternoon to you. 